Hello again, my dear friends. Today's episode, I am so excited to introduce Shannon to you. Shannon's remarkable journey in animal communication has equipped her with a profound understanding and the necessary skills to create a safe and nurturing space for you and your beloved pet, enabling you to forge a deeper bond. Animal communication extends beyond simply decoding interspecies messages. It encompasses building a connection with you, the human companion. Shannon recognizes this crucial aspect and places great emphasis on fostering a strong bond between you and your pet at every stage of life. Even after your furry friend has passed into the spirit realm, Shannon believes in supporting both you and your pet to maintain a sense of closeness and connection. She understands that complications may arise and she is here to lend a helping hand. Are you seeking a pep talk, a mediator, a translator, or an objective new voice? Perhaps you're longing for a fresh perspective or an unconditionally loving mentor. Shannon Cutts is delighted to offer her expertise in guiding you through the intricacies of interspecies relationships. Say that five times fast. <laughs> With her gentle and compassionate approach, Shannon can help you navigate the complexities that may arise, providing the support you and your pet need. Tune in to today's episode where Shannon Cuts shares her wisdom and insights, empowering you to cultivate a deeper understanding and connection with your animal companions. Discover the transformative power of animal communication and embrace a new level of harmony and love with your interspecies family. Have you tried training methods that just didn't work? Do you feel that your pet is not getting his or her nutritional needs met? Are illnesses and bad behavior your daily norm? You're going to want to join me on The Pet Parenting Reset, where you'll hear interesting and informative interviews and get solutions to all your pet problems. I'm your host, Jessica L. Fisher. Shannon, thank you so much for joining us today. Who is this that you have with you? This is Miss Petalcut. She is four months old, four months young. And she is, if you can pick up little tiny delicate tinkling sounds, that is the sound of the avian babysitter. This is one of my many pieces of very inexpensive costume jewelry that, that we keep always at the ready for just such times as these. Um, my soul bird pearl passed just a few months ago and Petal um, came along soon thereafter, and that's a whole interesting story for anyone who's listening today who's interested in soul animal reincarnation, because that can be a really powerful way to experience our bond with our animal loves. But I'm so delighted to be here with you today, Jessica, and the important work that you're doing with the whole dog. Because that is such a state that that speaks to my heart. You and I talked on um, an earlier recording we did for my podcast. Let's talk to animals about um, how how it how vitally important it is to not take a cookie cutter approach. And I feel mm -hmm. like in 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 our own way, each one of us is providing an essential piece of deconstructing that puzzle where we're constantly trying to kind of just find something that works well enough. Like we want to go beyond well <laughs> enough. We want to go beyond maintain. We want to, we want to, you know, boost quality of life to the 150% level. Yeah. <laughs> so delighted to be delighted to be here today. Well, I am just thrilled to have you as well. And your website Animal love languages is, I, I wanted to kind of put that out there at the beginning of our chat today. So anybody listening could kind of type that in and browse and look a little bit because the, at the very top of your page, it is so catchy to me. It is, it says, what if a single conversation could change your pet's life? And I was like, like my jaw on the floor, like, mm. oh, my goodness, because this 
could really mean anything. Of course, in the context of what you are doing, it means one specific thing, but it could mean anything. It could mean a conversation that you are listening to on a podcast as you are doing right now. It could mean a conversation you have in your healthy pet store with someone who works there. It could mean a conversation with someone online who has a little bit more experience in maybe more holistic modalities or a little bit more education and nutrition. But in your case, <laughs> tell me a little bit about what that means in your case. <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting because there's this myth in the, the field that I work in now, animal communication, that if we don't come right out of the chute into an idyllic farm filled with, you know, wonderful interspecies wildlife all around us, that we, we just somehow aren't the right stuff to be able to hear the animals, to be able to respond in kind, to be able to feel connected, that we're kind of doomed to live our life feeling not a part of, um, you know, the, like those old puzzles that they used to do, like find six things that don't fit. And it's like, and we're always one of those things. It's like, we can, we can unwrap our innate inborn birthright ability to hear the animals whether they're our companion animals whether they're the wildlife that we share space with the planet itself and i do feel like there's a lot of that going on at subtle levels right now as the planet kind of keeps turning the volume up and also um, be able to hear ourselves better and deepen the relationships we have with other human animals and reconnect with all of life going on around us. And so I want to, I want to start by preface and preface what I'm about to share about what I do and, and, and the field that I'm a part of by saying, if you're listening to this and you're like, ah, oh, geez, you know, I, I just, I'm too old. I missed the boat. No, you're not. <laughs> I learned how to do this when I was 50. And, <laughs> you know, we come to it when, we're ready when, and I don't mean that ready, like necessarily just in our schedule and having time, but in our soul, in our heart, when we're brave enough to challenge what we've always believed to be true. And so the work I do started many, many years ago when I started hiring animal communicators. I was hiring people like me, what I do now, <laughs> because I believed in it. And I would wait with bated breath to hear what my turtle thought of her lunch or what my dachshund thought of his new food or what my cockatiel petal thought of her new casa. And one day, one of the communicators I worked with said, you know, you can do this. And I didn't hear her at the time because it wasn't in my frame of reference. I firmly believed I can't do this. That's something that you're born with, like enough talent to win, you know, the voice or whatever talent show is going on these days or the high school spelling bee or whatever it is. And now I, um, I've discovered she was absolutely right. And it actually started with, um, a very simple. I've, I've had a meditation practice since I was 19. And one day, shortly after my very best friend passed away, suddenly I was meditating and I heard the words, you are an animal sensitive and intuitive. And I thought, that is fascinating. But I don't know what the heck <laughs> that means. And that led me on a journey. It doesn't always have to be that dramatic, but I'm going to just go out on the limb and assume your listeners who are tuning into this particular podcast versus maybe some of the other features that you've done on raw food feeding or positive dog training, they may have an inkling of curiosity. And so I just want to share that everyone is invited to this particular party. It's never too late. I That's love awesome. the work that I do today, and I really feel like the other day I rescued a hatchling aquatic turtle in our backyard. Um, a week before that, I helped um, to safeguard a nest of baby wrens that was in our one of our flower pots. And so it's like we don't have to have ambition to be some kind of a – I didn't start out looking to be a professional animal communicator. I just wanted to stop feeling so isolated and alone. 
and feeling like I was the a, the sole alien species, the one that didn't really belong. You know, we, we, you don't actually have to have a reason beyond simply the love in your heart. And if you start with that, your path will naturally unfold in, in absolutely the, the way that is best for you, for your own individual highest and best good, and also for the, the way that is best for the good of all. I firmly, 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 I don't just believe that. I live it. I felt it. I feel it in my own life. I see it in the lives of my students and my clients and definitely the animals that we serve as well. There's a lot to unpack in there. First of all, um, would never have guessed you are even 50 years old. You do not look it oh. <laughs> for anybody watching Thank on you. YouTube or Rumble. <laughs> I'm well, sure you know will what? agree they with me. They have these wonderful little filters. <laughs> And, you know, bangs, bangs are the 50 year olds Botox. So, um, you know, but they've got these wonderful little filters now and, uh, you know, it just, I guess, I, I guess, you know what? I honestly think the animals keep me young. They definitely keep me active and sweating because I'm always up and out. And I'm sure you see that with your clients as well. It's like our pets keep us young in, in a way that's mm -hmm. very complimentary to how kids keep us young. Yeah. You know, if we want to stay in oh, touch yes. with our youth, with our inner youth, even if we get up and 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 are like, huh, I don't really recognize that person in the mirror anymore. We recognize ourselves on the inside by surrounding ourselves with kids and pets. Oh, that is so true. That is so, so true. And I love how you said that um, you were just looking to belong because I think far too many people can resonate with that because we have become so far removed from how humans are supposed to live and coexist in nature. And it does give us this deep sense of not belonging. And we don't really know where that comes from or how to fix it. And we try all these things to fix it when, if we just, got back in nature mm -hmm. that would solve so much of it right mm -hmm. and so i'm sure you mm -hmm. that's one of the things you probably noticed when when you started communicating with uh, so all of these much. wonderful creatures that they're I like suddenly i don't know i'd I be interested to know that yeah i suddenly developed this desperate driving need to go barefoot everywhere and i was the loony in my neighborhood that would hug trees. I'd go out for my morning walk. And of course, when you're first starting something new, anything new, no matter how easy others make, make it look and no matter how absolutely and utterly in <laughs> those of you who are listening to the audio can't see me doing my air quotes here, but you're in on a soul level to do this thing, to, to learn, to open yourself up to a new experience. You still, we get nervous, we get scared. So this was part of my routine. I, we build in our routines. And I mean, I still have a routine to these, to this day. I like to open up my window a crack when I need to feel a little more connected when I'm doing a session with a client or I'm teaching a class or tonight I'll be leading a practice group for some of my students and chances are very good. I'll have the window open. I have house plants. I don't want someone listening thinking, well, I don't live in a place where it's safe or it's healthy or it's possible to go out and tromp around on the grass. Nature can be as simple as a, a little potted plant. You know, it can be as simple as opening a window and just getting a breath of fresh or sort of fresh or outside yeah. air, anything yeah. that's connected. It can be watching a beautiful video on YouTube and feeling the rise of your energy and the expansion of your heart as you watch your favorite wild animal. For me, it's watching videos of sea turtles or tortoises. And so there's all kinds of ways, but the path leads the student. This is something I've discovered. And so, and, and, and because it does often begin with this sensation, this feeling of there's something more going on here. And I really want to speak to that because so many students, when I talk to them initially, you know, when they're first thinking about maybe studying or even just scheduling a session they're you know, and that it's not the skepticism isn't, oh, I don't believe in this stuff necessarily, because those folks don't generally get that far unless they just want to have a really mm -hmm. good rousing argument. And I'm not the person to pick for that. But they feel it feels more like um, I just don't 
I've never had the experience overtly before, and so I don't have anything in my fight, flight, freeze, tender, befriend toolkit that suggests this is possible. And yet when we start to unpack what's going on, they can absolutely point to moments when they have felt their animal is not just trying to communicate with them, but is actually getting through. And one of the easiest examples to see in our own life is, you know, if you've owned, uh, and I don't love the word owned, but if you cared for and um, shepherded an animal in your life for more than about five minutes, you probably had that moment when the vet says everything's fine and something in you just says, I just don't think so. That doesn't mean that they're developing a major medical problem, but it means that something's not something's not ideal, something's not optimal. And so those are moments, like for me, the way it often manifests is I'm busy doing something on my laptop the way I usually am. And all of a sudden I just get up without knowing why. And I go to the back door and my red footed tortoise is right there. In fact, it happened to me just before we hit record today. She's hungry, her shell itches and she wants to come in. I didn't have a conscious thought. Something moved me. And it's this willingness. We don't show up, you know, because we know that it's going to happen. We show up because we're willing to experience, to, to admit that we don't know everything there is to know about anyone, including ourselves. Let's not ever get old enough to think that we know, we've got our own number because we don't. There's a whole, it's just, if you know, the apps on your phone, it's like there's thousands of them there that we've never, we don't even have time to explore. This is the same with interspecies communication. It's there. It's in your operating system. It's just most of us. When would we ever encounter anyone that even tells us to go look for it, let alone un, you know, download it, unzip it, and unpack it, install it, and take it for a test drive. And so just if you're listening or you're watching and you, you keep company with animals, wild animals, domestic animals, your neighbor's animals, your pet sitting animals, whoever it is, just think of a time when you have just kind of gotten a hunch or felt a vibe. Like, I, I can't confirm that that dog is anxious, but I just feel the anxiety and I just yeah. feel moved and inspired and my empathy channel, we talk a lot about empathy channel and animal communication um, in our workshops. I just feel moved, inspired, and I empathize and I adjust my behavior as if this dog is anxious to create a more relaxing, a less, um, uh, how do you say, um, overwhelming or overstimulating environment. I just naturally do the things that I would do if that dog really was if that dog could talk and go, I am anxious. We don't, we don't need that. We can, so if this is a feeling language, it's a sensory language. It's not a mental language. It's not an intellectual language. We have all these other tools. We just haven't used them. Most of us, most of us just haven't used them. If anything, maybe we've just taken them for a test drive around, around the cul-de-sac you know? and then yeah. we've come right back and gone right back up into our heads. Yeah. And it's interesting. You said that, you know, you, you don't often have people telling you to, you know, go out there and do it to, to, uh, of course, you were using a very technology analogy with sure, downloading sure, the sure. app, and and but I not I, I I would take it further than that and say not only do you do you not have people encouraging this type of communication, but you actually have more people discouraging it and saying you know that's not real, right? Like that that's what I hear yeah, more often that. than anything. And that's, that can be the hard, especially if that person is really close to you, that can be the hard yeah. part, right? Yeah, that's a tough one. And when I come up against that, now I'm, I'm not the kind of personality, I just, I guess I'm not wired this way. I don't crave um, being in a company of other so-called believers. I, I just, I'm pretty comfortable with I know what I feel and, and experience to be true, um, accurate and, um, alive in my own life. And 
yet I realize that that may not be the case. I think we all live these crazy parallel lives on so many different levels. And who am I to tell somebody else that their experience at what they feel and, and have seen to be true in their own life isn't. So it's kind of like if, if that's where you are, that's okay with me. However, a lot of times when I do encounter that, I'll, I'll head back to my very favorite, now classic movie, Contact, with Jodie Foster and Matthew McConaughey. See, not now my 50 is showing, right? I, t- I, had, I, I, I ordered a <laughs> coffee the other day at this little kiosk in this bright and shiny, happy new little coffee place that I went to. And um, I asked the, the barista if, if he had ever seen this movie with Julia Roberts. He looked right at me with a straight face and he said, I think I'm too young for that. I was like, I'm <gasps> too young for Julia Roberts. Okay. So Point B, I know there's this moment. See, Jody's character is a scientist and Matthew's character is a man of faith, Christian faith. And so they're kind of having this argument about um, facts, like like data versus feelings and, and inner knowings and hunches. And he's trying to get through to her to share that his experience is valid, even if she doesn't quite get it. And who he says to her, mm-hmm. you know, did you love your father? And her father had passed away when she was young and she just got really upset. You could see it in her face. She said, yes, very much. And he said, well then prove it. And that's kind of the level where, you know, we have to acknowledge, it's like, I love, I love my inner species family. I love my best friend. I love the house plant hanging above my head, but I couldn't prove it to you. I don't have the toolkit for that. Mm-hmm. I don't think any of us do. I, I don't have the toolkit to prove that the bad vibe or the, 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 the hunch that I'm having is um, actionable. And yet mm-hmm. I'm kind of um, old enough now <laughs> I've had enough experiences to say don't ignore that that I'm probably going to act on it anyway and so it's like ugh. what I loved about that movie is at the end they talk about how um, the methodology is different but the goal is one and the same the pursuit of personal truth and so it's like that's we're all on a journey it's like you go you do you do you I do me but if you're interested in me <laughs> and what I do then let's let's talk about how the different ways that you might be able to have an experience of it versus go up into our heads and just talk about how that could possibly be real because we don't have hard data we don't have facts right I'm just I'm just not I'm more interested in it because I have just you know anybody that's thinking I don't want to study anything else you don't study animal communication you practice it's all experiential. Yes, there is a head component, and we go into that in depth in my longer form workshop so that you understand the role of the mind. But the conversation isn't happening there. I often tell my students if the mind is talking, the message has already been sent and received. So if oh, that's your mind interesting. is busy, 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 you've already gotten something. Let's stop for a moment and see what it is. That's very interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. So you, yeah. you not you, you do sessions for individual clients, but you also teach this to people. That's what I'm understanding. I correct? Do I do? And I also have a podcast. Let's talk to animals, which I think you're very well familiar with, where I interview yeah. other intuitives <laughs> and healers and complementary practitioners to talk about how it all comes together. But yes, I do. Um, primary, pr- the primary way that individuals tend to come to animal communication as a student is they first had an experience with their own animal because Mm -hmm. that's really what kind of breaks through the mental stalemate you know because so much of Mm -hmm. our education our training it is it's all very much about go head up into that left brain hemisphere and see what what it has to say about this and so what happens one of one of my um my, my favorite students, it's a mother-daughter um, the duo that they both uh, have taken courses with me. And they talk about the very first time they had an experience. They were at a dog show because they have these wonderful athletic golden retrievers. And they uh, 
they had like four hours before their next meet and there were like a few vendors and one of them was an animal communicator and they were so bored that they finally just decided, okay, fine, we'll go and get a free 10 minute reading. And the communicator told them something about one of their dogs that just blew them away. And it, it, it just flipped a switch. And so that's what happens. That's why I encourage the animal communication curious, if you will, to consider starting with a session with one of your personal animals because we need to have an experience. It's the only way to cancel out this very nervous fight, flight, freeze system that's saying, but that's dangerous because it's unknown. It's like, it's not going to eat you for lunch. You know, that system just doesn't know the difference between, um, between a, a text message and the saber toothed tiger. It just, it doesn't, it doesn't distinguish because distinguishing means you probably just got eaten. We just can't mm -hmm. stop to just, so we have to kind of do a little bit of extra work to parse apart. Wait a minute. I want to have that experience. I know it's yeah. not going to eat me for lunch, even if this most primitive sensory part of me that just wants me to stay alive doesn't necessarily know or care because that's not its job, you know? Right. So yeah. this is, I, this is what I recommend. You know, I recommend that you start by having a session. And here's the other thing I'm going to say that may sound totally self-defeating, but we seem like a rare breed until you get a little bit more immersed into the field, probably just like positive dog training. You get a raw feeding. It's like, it feels like this, like you're out on an island screaming, you know, is anybody there until you get into the field? And then you're like, wow, we're flooded. Like the market is, you know, saturated. So yeah. this, to, all this to say, there are a lot of different communicators out there. There are a lot of different styles of communication. There's a lot of different ways of focusing. Uh, some communicators specialize in certain species, some specialize in a certain life stage or even the afterlife. And so it's like, if you don't have a fantastic experience with the very first session that you book with the first communicator, don't let that put you off. There are too, too, too many of us to give up that easily. Try again you know, and, and yeah. continue until you do feel something move you that isn't mm -hmm. coming from your mind. Yeah. And that actually is something that I have learned is that people, like you were saying, are, they, they communicate differently. I've, I've heard of people who see, get images and I've heard mm -hmm. of people who get like they'll get feelings. And so mm -hmm. like, there's a lot of, there's a lot of different types out there. And so mm -hmm. one may actually resonate with you better than the other. If you're getting a session, <laughs> it's fascinating. And one may Some be, people, it, yep. Yeah. Oh, no, I was gonna say one, one may translate better to you than, than another, like, mm -hmm. you know, because a feeling isn't necessarily as specific as, or an image, not necessarily as specific as somebody who might actually see, like, I don't, I don't know how you do it, but maybe see something a little more clearer, more definitive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's so many different levels. I've, I've interviewed communicators who they only work remotely and they type out the whole conversation as they have it. And so it arrives in a text form or I, I do it in lots of different ways. And my sessions are about, I, the reason I call myself a, a sensitive and intuitive is because that's the way it was introduced to me. And what I've learned about that on my journey is that it means that about half the, the session is me talking directly with the intuitive level of that animal. And the other half, if not more, is my light team, my spirit guides talking with the light team for that animal. And so it's just, there are so many different ways. Some, some communicators only want to do in-person sessions where they can actually be hands on. Some will, and, and, and the, to the point that you shared about the, the information coming in differently, that is one part kind of what we come into this journey with. Some of us may have a more intellectual Enneagram type or 
Myers-Briggs type or personality type or just preference for a certain way of interacting. And so those pathways are a little bit better developed. It's like I started out playing piano. So when I first added the mandolin, I was much better at the piano than I was at the mandolin. And with time, I got better at the mandolin. And then I added guitar and I was a train wreck with guitar. And we won't even talk about my attempts at the saxophone. So, you know, we have to kind of recognize that none of these, these, these ways, these methods that an animal can send us information or that we can send an animal information are off limits but some may be more deeply developed and, and, and literally more open than others. And it's not unlike, you know, if you have a very more of an intellectual or data driven, like an Enneagram five, you might prefer when you get a, you know, a whole text written out uh, communication where you can analyze everything and you can, if you're more of a visual learner, you might appreciate a communicator that gets most of their data in mini movie form and they can tell you a beautiful story about it. So it's, it's all out there for you. And this is the biggest, I love that you brought this up because this is actually the biggest part of the journey. Again, it's what's possible. What do I enjoy and where am I in terms of the progress meter of unpacking and unfolding these different gifts in my own life? And where would I like to take this further? You know, remaining open and noticing new things and getting curious and following a thread. I mean, that's why we love to surround ourselves with pets and kids because they haven't forgotten how to play, how to have fun, how to be creative for the sake of being creative. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, so it's, it, to me, it seems like, okay, if this is something that you are interested in, there are, you, I think you've given us two starting points. One is to connect more with nature, get outside, get some house plants, what, whatever is feasible for you to connect with nature a little bit more, and then actually go out and book some sessions with people for your own pets or pets around you so that you can start to see and understand how it actually works. Did I understand that right? <laughs> Absolutely. And, you know, some people may be listening to this and, and may be thinking, you know, I don't, but that costs money. I don't have the budget for that. I'm kind of maxed out. And what I want to share with you, if, if this describes you, is that there are also more opportunities to experience it without having to pay a fee than you might realize. For instance, in my practice group that runs once a month, we accept new uh, guests uh, animals and their and their guardians and my students it's kind of it wouldn't be unlike going to the hair salon and ha having a student kind of practice on you but these are advanced students and and I'm there and we we talk through everything and so there are, there are groups online on social media that you can join where you can share what what's going on with your animal or post a picture and you can get feedback so I don't want I don't want to present this like it's not inclusive. Like if you don't have a certain amount of money or money free for this, that this is off limits. This is something where you can just practice. One of the things, one of the challenges I present to my own students very early on in our journey is instead of just watering all your house plants on a schedule every week, try stopping and feeling which plants you're drawn to, which plants need water. It's very interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it or is. just plant something and, and, and tend to it and watch it grow. I've been trying to grow an avocado plant, you know, that first grader project they give you, get an avocado seed, put the little toothpicks in it. And I don't know, maybe they're 3D printing them now for all I know. But when I was in uh, first grade, this is one of the projects we did. And that dang thing just won't grow. So it's not as easy as it sounds. And just to start to get this deeper respect. I mean, I am not trying to imply that anybody listening or watching doesn't have respect, but it's it can be heady or it can be sensory. Like, wow, that thing just kicked out a strawberry. How the heck did that happen? I found one this morning on my strawberry plant and I was freaking blown away. It's like, wow, you, you know, did it's that all crazy, by yourself? Right? You didn't need any help? 
Right. I know. We have, we actually just, um, for the first time this year, we built a, a raised garden bed in our backyard. Oh, cool. So we have been growing. And I am telling you, these are the most delicious tomatoes you have ever had. Like they, the, what you get at the grocery store is not, doesn't even taste like a tomato, mm-hmm. right? And we have gotten some jalapeno peppers so far and Amazing. basil and parsley. And we're, like, it's just so fun. But it it's it's funny when you said which one of your house plant, like which of your house plants are actually talking to you because I've gotten to the point where I water on a schedule. I probably have a dozen house plants and I want more because I'm so drawn mm-hmm. to them. But mm-hmm. I have one plant that I am telling you, I look at it and like I, more often than not, I find myself thinking about this plant that I need to repot it, that I need to get it um, a little uh, like trellis to grow up on because it's hanging over. And I had no idea this plant was even going to grow like this. I thought it was this tiny little thing. And once I got it home, it just started going crazy. And I'm like, I I think about this plant all the time. And I just have not, other things in my life have been taking priority Mm -hmm. over the past week or so. But I'm Mm -hmm. like, as soon as you said that, my eye went to that plant. (laughs) Yeah. So it was just so funny. It's awesome. (laughs) It's awesome if you're listening it or you're watching love. right now. I know take it about look love. around your household and see who has been sending you. You know, at first it's gentle, polite little requests, and then it's kind of more like pokey pokey, nudgy nudgy reminders. And then before you know it, you're getting active stink eye from one of the green beings in your household. And you know, we just have to stop and notice. And it's a, it's, I I agree with you. I mean, we've got two tomato plants in our backyard and one of them I planted in this tiny pot and then it went absolutely nuts and took over the whole, and I was like, what are you doing? You know, we just have, and it's such a great, and the tomatoes are delicious, but it's such a great kind of mirroring of well, if that tiny little tomato plant can do that, what might I be able to do? Like, we just don't know, not mentally anyway, we don't know. And we can't explain why the tomatoes taste better when we've had a hand in their nurturing. But, you know, who knows if it would hold up in blind, blindfolded taste tests. But I, I, I think I would know my own. I just, I think I would know my own (laughs) tomato. I have an orchid tree in my backyard that means a great deal to me. And that poor little sucker has been repotted several times. We finally got it into the ground and it was really flailing around, just not doing well. And one day I walked out there, I'd been neglectful because I must have 50 or 60 plants indoor, outdoor. And I walked over to it and I said, you still matter to me so much more than all the others. I love you. I love you. I love you. And I opened one of its last little leaves and gave it a big kiss. And about a week later, every single branch that was bare had sprouted these amazing leaves. Um, Can't prove yeah. <laughs> that it responded, but every day now I kiss its little leaves and it keeps growing and it makes me happy. Yeah. Oh yeah, I know they do. I mean, if you if you can't there. if you can't keep a house plant, if you if you go around the corner, find the one living green being in your neighborhood. I'm thinking of people that live in you know very urban or very industrialized settings. Mm-hmm. A friend of mine just came back from New York City, and it's like that can be a hard place to really go kiss a leaf somewhere, or at least blow a kiss at it. You know, tell it it matters. And, or ask it questions. Are you, do you identify with being male or female? How long have you been there? Who's your best friend? I I mean, just, we have to kind of forget about these costumes we're wearing and start connecting to the vibrant aliveness that we all share. And if Mm. you can do that, there's not really any barrier. You don't have to have a personal animal. You don't have to. I was walking our dog the other the other day and a dog came running at us and didn't know the dog at the time was a neighbor's dog. And uh, 
our dog is very friendly and all the dogs like him. And so we were able to, to get this dog and find the owner. But along the way, as we were chatting, the dog told me, I don't like my name. And I didn't want to tell the guardian, you know, a lot of rescue dogs come in and they just get a name because the intake mm -hmm. is kind of stressful and the staff need to name <laughs> them something. They don't know the dog's name. And so this dog got the name Nacho and, and he's a beautiful white dog. I wouldn't be able to tell you the breed because he's definitely mixed. And he uh, just really does nachos. I mean, when you think of nachos, they're like, they're like orange and they're, you know, and he, did, and they're kind of spicy. And it's like, and he told me I'm a lover and he suggested the name <laughs> Diego. And when I told his person, his person was like, well, I didn't tell uh, my mother, my mother was, was there one day and she told um, his person, I um, did my daughter tell you that your dog doesn't like his name. And I'm like over there in the corner, those of you who are listening, can't see me like <laughs> simply cringing right now. I'm like, Oh my God, no, he didn't ask. You don't tell, you know? And the owner just very calmly said, well, we don't really like his name either. And I said, well, he says he's a lover and he could be, um, he could get, behind so to speak Diego and the owner laughed and because apparently he is not fixed yet and so he was kind of like trying to hump and mount our dog so he was like as uh, my back is turned he's saying I'm a lover and then the owner said well I I could I I, I kind of like I could see him as a Diego you know so it's like these very subtle um these very subtle things that happen. So you don't have to have your own animal. You don't have to have your own plant. You don't have to have anything but this awareness that life doesn't have to look a certain way on the outside in order to be alive on the inside. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. That's wow. That's incredible. Um, so for those people listening who may be thinking that's not my path that's not mm -hmm. something i want to learn how to do but i would be interested in incorporating this into my animal's care mm -hmm. how how would something like that look how do you how do you go about a, a you know a client session how do you obviously want, you know, a client to incorporate this into their overall care routine. And, you know, obviously we still need the veterinarian and we still need other things Absolutely. going on. But, um, it's, it's just part of the puzzle. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I like to, to speak of it as building your animals care team well-being and enrichment team and we all have different roles to play we all have different hats it's not polite to steal each other's hats we want to refer um i'm the first person to to say run don't walk to your veterinarian whether that's traditional holistic tcm something else if you're you know concerned about medical or health related information uh, and yet there is always going to be a seat at the table for hearing your animal's perspective. Now, ideally, we would be having these conversations daily. Ideally, someone like me wouldn't be necessary because everybody would be awake and alive to this communication, this two-way communication pathway. Um, we're not in that place yet just as a civilization, as a, as a species. Um, mm -hmm. So ideally, we would just be having these facilitated conversations regularly to make sure everything is okay. I got to the habit of doing that. But most of the time when somebody reaches out to me, it's because they do have a nagging question or a concern or there's a problem or there's a change coming up. Uh, something like they're not tolerating their food well or they don't like each other. There's an, an animal in the family that doesn't get along with another animal. Or are you ready to go? You know, this is a big, big, big one, especially in my practice is the end of life conversation and the last wishes and 
the reconnection and possibly the reincarnation to continue since in most cases our animals are we know this going in our animals are going to pass before we do we we know this and we still say yes which i find a daily miracle it's just amazing to me it just blows my hair back but so there's often you know one or more questions and the number of questions and how long they've been building up tends to drive the length of the conversation but and, and again, I'm just going to put a caveat on this and say this is how I do it. But my sessions always begin with allowing the animal to speak freely. And this means I just listen. I introduce myself. I use some Reiki energy. I'm a Reiki master practitioner. So I use some Reiki energy as a, by way of introduction to say I'm a benevolent. I'm, a, um, I'm an empath in your life and I'm just here to be your voice and to be your advocate if need be, and you can trust me. And then the animal is allowed to speak for however long that animal needs to speak. And then we get to the questions. And by the time, you know, I, I do work remotely in that I will just speak into a, a, a voice recorder. And if the client prefers it that way, I will just send the entire recorded conversation, the two-way conversation. That way I can also work live. When I work live, normally I have connected with that animal in advance and there's a specific reason for that. Not all communicators do it this way. And I've done it where I just kind of show up and I wait. What I've discovered is because I'm introverted and because I like to have deep conversations, it's no different than how I do, how I prefer to interact with people. I like to have one deep conversation at a time. And so I, I will take a little chunk of time, talk to that animal in advance. And this is really helpful, especially when we've got anxious or highly sensitive animals or animals that have had some trauma or they're going through some health issues. And they're like, yeah, I'm not going to just, you don't just walk up to somebody on the street and go, how's your digestion? Like you want to kind of, you know, build a little rapport yeah. first, you know, they may not want to talk about that. And so it's, yes, there's this higher level, unconditionally loving vibration that the animals have, but we're not just there to float in the ecstasy together. We're going to have a brass tacks conversation. Their human has some questions. And so this allows the animal to speak. And a lot of times what I find is that the information tumbles out. And by the time we get to the human client's actual one, two, three questions, the linear questions that the mind kicks out, the animals already answered them in their own way. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah. so it, and each animal is different. I tend to be somebody, I, all my channels are pretty open, but I do tend to function at the level of deep inner knowings, which is those hunches that I'm talking about where you just know something you can't unknow it. Like I love my father. I can't, I know, I know this, I feel this to be true. And because of that, it took me a little bit, maybe longer than normal to learn animal communication because I didn't realize that that was a pathway. And so I was just missing all of my own information that was coming in, but that I yeah. tend to kind of have that. And then what happens if, if, if a human guardian wants to get on the phone or the zoom with me live and they choose that kind of a session, then what happens a lot of times is that we can go two way back and forth with that animal and clarify. Maybe there are some things that the human doesn't understand. Maybe it's good to know this food doesn't agree with you, but what part of it or what would you prefer? Or so we can, or I don't understand that. You know, you look like you're gobbling it down. Am I starving you? Is it delicious? But it's, you know, causes indigestion. I mean, so there's so many different nuanced levels that are, okay, you, you know, you say she's bullying you and she says that you're bullying her what's really going on. So there's a lot to this conversation. And if we can, again, just kind of forget about species a little bit, I, like I share with my students, I also share with my human clients, we already know how to have a conversation. We already understand how something that feels and sounds simple can become a little bit more convoluted or complex. And so if you kind of, again, forget about species, you can start to imagine, well, why would I want to have a conversation with my animal? And how would that deepen our trust and our 
and, and improve our communication and boost our shared confidence. You know, a lot of times it's that human that needs more confidence, especially if that animal's new to them or if that animal has had a, 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 a big life change and is and things have shifted and the daily care routine that everybody has counted on for so long no longer applies. And that can really rock our confidence. And sometimes we just need, for me as a communicator, as an intuitive, for me, it's like, I'm there for you and your animal. And let's talk about what's really going on. And let's, you know, let's get it down out of the head, this left brain logic analytic and into the heart. And you can start to kind of feel for yourself and just trying to boost that confidence, get you back to where you're not feeling so um, maybe overwhelmed or intimidated or just kind of exhausted or aggravated or irritated or angry or whatever. It's like we just sometimes there is a venting aspect to it too. And it's about inviting a safe and yet slight and more objective, just a listening ear and, and really a cheerleader. Like for me, this is, again, this is just how I work, but I'm just your cheerleader. You guys are together. You have a soul contract. I'm not here to argue about that, but we don't come here. At least I haven't yet met anyone um, whose life has been a nonstop vacation from start to finish. <laughs> so we come here to learn, you know, we come here yeah. to grow and that could be really uncomfortable. And I know how important mm-hmm. mentors have been in my life. I, I wouldn't be here without some of my mentors. And so that's one of the roles that I offer during our sessions is to just to be someone who maybe just will see things a little differently and just bring some new, let's just get some new information going in here. Let's just bring, maybe shed some light in some maybe underserved areas. And so, and let's get, just get a little curious, just, you know, okay, it's an issue. Okay. It's a problem. Okay. It's, you know, it's a maybe even a big deal, but we just hold it lightly and just allow it to share its wisdom with us. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yes, for sure. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think, I think, uh, first of all, I appreciate you coming on and talking to our listeners. This has been really incredible eye opening. Um, and hopefully it kind of touches people the way I know it, <laughs> it touches me. Um, and, would you mind, I know we uh, already mentioned it earlier, but how can people find you, learn more about you if they wanted to take any courses with you or just book you um, for a session? Where can people find you to do that? Animallovelanguages.com is the easiest way. You know, we're just, it's, it's not, it's not hard to find us. If you prefer socials, you can find us at Instagram at love and feathers and shells. And you spell out those and A and D you can also meet uh, some of my interspecies family members. You can head over to YouTube. I've got a lot of free trainings over there at SM cuts, super sexy handle. I know, but what can you do? And also my podcast is hosted over there, but you know, animallovelanguages.com. You can email me Shannon at animallovelanguages.com. You can reach out that way and we can just, we can chat about kind of what your heart is, is, is bubbling up with and kind of where you're feeling drawn and, and most importantly, you know, what is prompting your interest? What's going on? You know, what's Mm -hmm. going on? Are you thinking about getting a new animal? Are you thinking about adding an animal to the family? Do you have an animal who's transitioning into a different life stage or transitioning into spirit? Are you missing somebody who's in spirit? Are you hoping maybe they'll come back and how we find them? There are so many different, but what's bubbling up inside you? What is drawing you in this super saturated, overwhelming (laughs) um, (laughs) online and as well as in person daily life that we live, what is keeping this at a volume in your heart where you, it you keep kind of coming back to it? Let's let's unpack that a little bit more, and, and maybe I can be of service to you and and yes. your animals on that journey. Yeah. Mm. 
Yes, absolutely. And I appreciate so much. Just, I, I feel like you're almost, you're like a therapist. You talk like a therapist. And you're very calming, and I appreciate that <laughs> so much. Oh, it's my so, pleasure. It's certainly <laughs> passing along everything that I have, I have learned. There have been many amazing souls, total, truly unconditionally patient souls who have listened to me, and I still have them, you know, and we, we can all play those roles for each other. Uh, there's, you know, and for those of you who are listening and maybe you're just, you just kind of want to learn a little bit more about all of this, but you're not really ready to really initiate a conversation yet. I would direct you to, uh, my podcast where there, you could meet a ton of awesome communicators as well. In addition to me, but, and also there's a, a free tools section under the learn with me tab. And I've got lots of free resources, including a really cool tool called why you pick me. And I'm still developing it, but right now we're featuring five species, cats, dogs, horses, reptiles, and avians. And so you can find out what if, if you've just got a favorite and if you've got all, all five favorites, that's okay. But most of us, like for me, it's 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 parrots like I've I've had a parrot companion since I was eight I started begging for one when I was seven like what is it and turtles like what is it about these animals why is my soul drawn to them why does it feel like yeah. you know if I don't have a dog in my life if I don't have a cat in my life if I don't have a horse to look forward to seeing every day my soul's gonna wither up and die and so you can actually click on it and you can find out what the species has to share about why one aspect of, at the soul level, why you're so drawn to this particular species group. So that's a really fun one that your listeners yes, and viewers may enjoy. Oh my gosh. Yes. So interesting. I'm going to go check it out as soon as we get off. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I will make sure to put your website link in the show notes as, as always. And um, Shannon, again, thank you so much for being here and talking with us. And I know I always end uh, just telling everybody to give their pets a little extra love for me, but you might have a little different message and that's okay. <laughs> well, you know what? The world, no, the world is never going to be poorer for one additional belly kiss or a head rub or a, a, a a little padding session or a little massage or a, a, maybe a treat. And so I would just, <laughs> I'm going to second that, you know, more love, more love, more love, more love, more love, more understanding, more empathy, more, and you know what? More self-love. Give yourself some credit. You know, we can only <sighs> do for others and be for others to the, to the extent that we also do and be for ourselves. And that typically tends to be the toughest of all of our lessons on this path. So don't mm -hmm. forget oh. about yourself. Yeah. A treat for a treat, a hug for a hug. How about that? Oh, I will second that. <laughs> yeah. Yes. All right, guys. <laughs> thank you so much for being here. And I will talk to you next week. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. Make sure that you're following the show so you never miss an episode. And please take a moment to rate the show on your podcast app. I'd also love it if you'd share this podcast with your friends and family so that they can benefit from the information to help their pets live long, happy lives too. Don't forget to take advantage of this special discount as a listener today and get access to over 100 online videos in my online dog training, the furry family coach. Just go to thefurryfamilycoach.com and use code podcast at checkout to get your first month for only $7. That's thefurryfamilycoach.com and use code podcast at checkout to get your first month for only $7. I can't wait to have you join and see you on the inside. Oh, oh, oh.